Good morning. Welcome to worship in this season of Pentecost. Welcome to all of you who are here and especially visitors. I've got family here again. Those of you who were here on Baptism Sunday, she has grown quite a bit. Um, and she's my baby when she's in this church, remember? Um, welcome to all of you who are watching online or listening on the radio. We are so glad to have you with us, however you are able to join us. And what a beautiful day. Yesterday and today, I think these last days of summer is kind of where we are. It's going to, the temperature at least, is going to go a little bit down um, starting this week. Um, thanks to everybody who makes worship possible, um, especially this week. I want to thank Lee and Rick. Um, Gary has been on vacation, and so they have stepped up to um, get everything ready. So thanks to them. Um, here, just a few announcements. Flowers on the altar are from Odell Brotland's funeral service, which was on Monday. Um, we want to keep Odell, Margie's family um, in prayers. Um, couple, there's a lot of stuff in the bulletin, just a few things I want to call out. Um, first of all, I'm very happy to let you know that Wednesday Bible School is back on. Wednesday Bible School will begin this Wednesday. <laughs> Pastor Len Liptak um, sent me a message this week and said he would be um, able to lead that. So um, we're very, very grateful to him for that. And anybody who's able to, as he put it, um, do crowd control, um, because 25 to 35 kids is a lot. And so anybody who's able to be here just to, you know, be with the kids and um, don't have to lead anything, but just be with the kids, please let us know. And I think, Bev, you're doing snacks. Is that right? All right. Thank you for that. Um, also want to call out EMT training. I think everybody um, has been aware that um, the ambulance has been looking for people to fill in. We are able, to, due to a, um, a grant, to do EMT training right here in Spring Grove. A number of people have already signed up, but we really want to get the word out that EMT training can happen right here in Spring Grove, I think starting in January, and that's really important for our town to be able to maintain the ambulance here and keep times, um, arrival times low. Um, let's see what else. Next Sunday is the first of many big Sundays for the rest of the year, but next Sunday we are celebrating the ministry of um, Matt, um, Elmore Matson. Uh, as far as we know, Vivian will be here, Luther will be here, some of the other family. We are going to have a big choir. Um, I think the choir is going to do three numbers next uh, Sunday, and then we'll have a special fellowship afterwards. If you have not already done so, either online or um, on this piece of paper, please get to the office your memories of or stories of Matt. Um, we've gotten quite a few in, especially on the Facebook page. We've gotten a few in to the office as well, but we really want to um, showcase all of the wonderful memories. Um, I didn't I'd have the pleasure of uh, knowing Matt, but Vivian came to my ordination, and that was really, really special. And let's see, does anybody have any other announcements? Well, then let's all take a deep cleanse. Oh, wood cutting. Oh my gosh. It's sitting right, it says right here. The wood cutting bee um, at Pastor Lane's is on Thursday. Wood cutting, the wood cutting bee obviously is a great way to get um, all the wood ready for next season's maple syrup. It's also a great opportunity for um, those uh, males especially, and females I think are welcome as well. But especially all of you men, maybe you're retired, um, maybe you could use a little project or so, but it's a great opportunity for you guys to be in fellowship with one another. So the woodcutting be at 9 a.m. at Zathke's on Thursday. And of course, we all want maple syrup, so yeah. Now I think we're done, right? Okay, well, let's all take a deep cleansing breath. Let's breathe in the Spirit of God. Let's breathe out all our cares and anxieties as we prepare to worship. God is with us. Are we doing a call to worship today? Okay.
stand as you are able. Worship begins with confession and forgiveness found on page 94 of your red hymnal. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, And for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our first hymn is number 522, As We Gather at Your Table. our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend. 
defend us, gracious Lord. on page two of your bulletin. We pray together. God of love, giver of life, you know our frailties and failings. Give us your grace to overcome them. Keep us from things that harm us and guide us in the way of salvation. Amen. You may be seated. Today's first reading is from the book of Ezekiel, chapter 18, and starting with the first verse. Ezekiel challenges those who think they cannot change because of what their parents were and did, or who they think they cannot reverse their own previ previous behavior. God insistently invites people to turn and live. Listen now to what the Spirit is saying to the church. The word of the Lord came to me. What do you mean by repeating this proverb concerning the land of Israel? The parents have eaten sour grapes and the children's teeth are set on edge. As I live, says the Lord God, this proverb shall no more be used by you in Israel. Know that all lives are mine. The life of the parent as well as the life of the child is mine. It is only the person who sins that shall die. Yet you say, the way of the Lord is unfair? Hear now, O house of Israel, is my way unfair? Is it not your ways that are unfair? When the righteous turn away from righteousness and commit iniquity, they shall die for it. For the iniquity that they have committed, they shall die. Again, when the wicked turn away from the wickedness they have committed and do what is lawful and right, they shall save their life because they considered and turned away from all the transgressions that they had committed, they shall surely live, they shall not die. Yet the house of Israel says, the way of the Lord is unfair. O house of Israel, are my ways unfair? Is it not your ways that are unfair? Therefore I judge you, O house of Israel, all of you according to your ways, says the Lord God. Repent and turn away, all turn away all your transgressions otherwise iniquity will be your ruin cast away from you all the transgressions that you have committed against me and get yourselves a new heart and a new spirit why will you die o house of israel for i have no pleasure in the death of anyone says the lord god turn then and live this is the word of the lord We will read responsibly Psalm 25, verses 1 through 9, as found in your bulletin. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. Do 
not let those who wait for you to be put to shame. Let them be ashamed who are wantonly treacherous. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. For you I wait all day long. Do not remember the sins of my youth or my transgressions. According to your steadfast love, remember me for your goodness sake, O Lord. Lord. He leads the humble in what is right and teaches the humble his way. Today's second reading comes from Philippians chapter 2, verses 1 through 13. As part of a call for harmony rather than self-seeking, Paul uses a very early Christian hymn that extols the selflessness of Christ and his obedient death on the cross. Christ's selfless perspective to be the essential perspective we share as the foundation for Christian accord. Listen now to what the Spirit is saying to the church. If then there is any encouragement in Christ, any consolation from love, any sharing in the Spirit, any compassion and sympathy, make my joy complete. Be of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfish, selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility regard others as better than yourselves. Let each of you look not to be your own interests, but to the interests of others. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not reg regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every tongue should bend, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Therefore, my beloved, just as you have always obeyed me, not only in my presence, but much more now in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who is at work in you, enabling you to both will and to work for his good pleasure. This is the word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel for the 18th Sunday after Pentecost from Matthew chapter 21, verses 23 through 32. Glory to you, O Lord. After driving the money changers out of the temple, Jesus begins teaching there. His authority is questioned by the religious leaders who are so, supposed to be in charge of the temple. Listen now to the good news the Spirit is bringing to the church. When Jesus entered the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came to him as he was teaching and said, By what authority are you doing these things? Who gave you this authority? Jesus said to them, I will also ask you one question. If you tell me the answer, then I will also tell you by what authority I do these things. Did the baptism of John come from heaven, or was it of human origin? And they argued with one another. If we say from heaven, he will say to us, why then did you not believe him? But if we say of human origin, 
We are afraid of the crowd, for all regard John as a prophet. So they answered Jesus, we do not know. And Jesus said to them, neither will I tell you by what authority I am doing these things. What do you think? The man had two sons. He went to the first and said, son, go and work in the vineyard today. The son answered, I will not. But later he changed his mind and went. The father went to the second son and said the same. And he answered, I go, sir, but did not go. Which of the two did the will of his father? And they said, the chief, the uh, priests and the elders, they said, the first. And Jesus said to them, truly I tell you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are going into the kingdom of God ahead of you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes believed him. Even after you saw it, you did not change your minds and believe him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Let's begin with a word of prayer. Almighty and gracious God, we give thanks that we can gather as a family of faith, that we can share in song and prayer and hopes, and we ask that you would lead our hearts to ones of faith. Where they need to be turned, we ask that they would be turned. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Well, I think um, it was uh, uh, Miss Travers who wrote the, the Mary Poppins stories. And if you're like me, you remember Mary, because I've seen it like a lot. And um, one of the lines in the play that or in the musical that I, I love so much is when after all has turned to chaos, entire chaos in, in the household, the father it confronts Mary Poppins, and Mary Poppins says to him, well, let me explain one thing. And he says, all right. And she says, I don't explain anything. And she marched up the stairs, and that was it. And I think that's where that line comes from, is when Jesus says to the authorities, the so-called authorities, well, I'm not telling you who gave me the authority to say this, because you can't figure it out. And you wouldn't understand if I tell you that's the inference from that. All these readings today are about turning back or turning our hearts, making them new once again, renewing our hopes and our faith. And, and that's what they're all about, except uh, because we need it. That's the problem, is we need it because when Jesus, who does he, in Matthew, the only people Jesus gets mad at, the only people in Matthew that Jesus yells at and is disappointed with is the clergy. And I read this and I think, well, I resemble that gospel text, you know, because I'm clergy. And so this is like, whoa, this is like personal. And it's interesting as I was, you know, reading for, for uh, doing the sermon and, and listening to some podcasts and stuff. Nobody said that. None of the none of the professors or you know, no matter how well they knew their Greek or Hebrew or anything, nobody said, well, you know, it's the clergy that are in trouble here, and um, and so it's it's an eye-opening experience as we read this text, at least for me. Because he compares with, with them, he says, well, let's talk about John the Baptist. You know, John, uh, we know the story from Advent, you know, where John dressed in camel's hair and he's out preaching and it's all about repent, turn back, turn from your ways. And the only people who believed him that what Jesus says, the only people who actually thought, you know, he's right. I'm, I'm going to, I'm headed nowhere. I'm headed to trouble or I'm, I'm 
wasting my life away. The only people who actually believed it were the tax collectors and the prostitutes, the ones in the community or the society who everybody agreed needed to change, as if they were the only ones. And that's what Jesus is pointing out to the clergy in this, this text. The, the whole um, Ezekiel text, you know, God's ways, you know, follow God's ways. Don't tell me they're unfair, God is telling the people through Ezekiel. Don't tell me they're wrong. Don't tell me, because God's ways are a way for you to live, to live your life and to enjoy your life, to be one with God. That's what the Lord God is saying in Ezekiel. And, he, and he's saying, whenever you take the human way, you're going to goof things up. You will goof things up. You'll sin. It's bound to happen because no human is perfect. None of us are. And we know that. We like to repeat that, but yet a lot of times we live as if, well, we're not perfect, but we, as Mary Poppins would say, practically perfect in every way. We like to believe that. It's not true. It's not true. But that's what Ezekiel is saying. And God, Jesus is pointing that out to, to the, peop, the people in that society who were seen as the most holy. Jesus was pointing that out to the people who thought of themselves as like they had one foot in God's kingdom and the other one was following close behind and everybody else, they could care less. That's what Jesus is pointing out, that here they were high and mighty, the so-called elites, thinking that they were better than everybody else, or they were holier, or they were without sin. And Jesus points out that their pride, their attitude, was one that needed to change. That was what held them back. That's what held God's grace back. Because their belief system did not match their life style. You see that? Their belief system didn't match how they lived. Paul writes to the Philipp Philippians, it's, Paul wrote a lot of letters. Most of the churches that Paul wrote to, letters to, were because those churches were really messing up. That they were, they were churches that the human nature was trying to take over. And, uh, and so usually, like when he, Paul wrote to the Corinthians and the Galatians and Ephesians, he always addressed the, the problems that were happening in that congregation and what they needed to change. But when he writes to the Philippians, it's like this is, a, this is a love letter that Paul writes to the Philippians because the Philippians, compared to all the rest, the Philippians are the ones who understand the message of Jesus the best. They were the ones who understood what Jesus Christ was all about and what his ministry was all about. And that's why Paul can put forward to them the selflessness of Jesus Christ, who was able, despite a world that seems to um, reward people for different things, Jesus reduced himself. He humbled himself to death on the cross so that people would have salvation. It was a selfless act that Jesus did. And it was the example that Jesus wanted his followers to follow is what, is what Paul says. 
And that's, the, that's what Jesus is saying to the priests, chief priests and the scribes. We have, you know, Martin Luther. Um, have I ever rever referenced Martin Luther? Maybe once or twice. But that was Martin Luther's whole thing with the Reformation was that the church of his time, the, the church was, had this belief system but their lifestyle did not match their belief system. They said they believed in Jesus, but they didn't act like it. And that was the problem that Martin Luther was trying to address. address. And that's our question for us today as we read this gospel is, Perhaps first question is, and I don't know the answers, only you know this. What is your belief system? What do you believe in? How is Jesus Savior? What does that mean to you? That forgiveness of sins, that Jesus has forgiven you all your sins. Not, you know, the psalmist, it writes in there, forgive the sins of my youth. And as one person said, eh, my sins of my youth were nothing. It's my middle age sins that need forgiveness. And now I'm, well, I won't say, but my old age sins are the ones I need forgiveness for now. And what does that mean? that we can put them behind us and turn to a new heart. What does that mean when we, we under, begin to work on through our prayer and meditation and scripture reading during our lives? What is that going to mean in lifestyle and how our lifestyle perhaps needs to change? Perhaps there are things we are doing that we need to quit or things we aren't doing that we need to start that our belief system has to match our lifestyle to be true and holy and to be blessed by God let us pray almighty and gracious God we give thanks for your love for us for even when we goof up even when we turn away at times, you call us back. You call us back to live with you and to experience your grace and your hope. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. We'll sing our next hymn. Apostles Creed, please stand as you are able. With the whole church, let us confess our faith. 
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Remembering the caring and generous works of God, we pray for the church, creation, and the needs of our neighbors. We put our trust in you as we pray for the church. Give bishops, pastors, deacons, and teachers the gift of wisdom and discernment. Be with them in bold truth and faithful witness. Bless our bishops, Elizabeth and Regina. Bless our ELCA partner congregations in Southeast Minnesota, South Sudan, Tanzania, and Colombia, and at the South border. And bless this congregation and all our ministries. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayers. Lead us in your truth as we pray for creation. Empower us to look to the interests of others as we make choices that impact the environment. Summon to us to be advocates for healthy waterways, habitats, and air. We give thanks for the rain. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayers. Lead us in justice as we pray for those in government, the military, and other positions of authority. Give them humble and willing hearts, looking to the needs of others, as you have called us to do. We pray also for our enemies. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayers. Trusting your goodness, we pray for all caregivers and people who are sick or suffering in any way. Give them encouragement and consolation in your presence. And especially today, Lord, we pray for all those in our community, our congregation, and our families who are suffering in any way. For Steve Guberud, Judy Tollefsrud, Charlie Silling, Joyce Lee, Megan Miller, Carson Betcher, Helen Hermeyer, Lori Vestersey, Terry Rudy Simon, Gloria Robley, Ione Selness, Janet Fussum, Linda Newgard, Pastor Bob Staskoff, Sharon Hansen, Nadia Wold, Lois Steele, Lisa Aquat, Linda Tollefsrud, Paul Morkin, Dawn Stone, Lori Hagen Jensen, Lucas A.J. Wistey, Mary Amundsen, Anna Bingham Yiris, Rachel Kerensky, Sharon Onstead Johnson, Mavis Johnsrud, and Jennifer Wedman. We pray for the family and friends of Larry Ofstedal and for all those we now name in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayers. Teach us your paths as we pray for this congregation. Be at work in us and unite us in your love as we work together for the sake of the gospel. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayers. Remember us according to your steadfast love as we offer these and the prayers of our heart, trusting in your compassion made known through Jesus Christ. Amen. And now may the peace of Christ be with you always. You may share that peace with one another. Peace. Peace, guys.
Let us pray. Holy God, gracious and merciful, you bring forth food from the earth and nourish your whole creation. Turn our hearts toward those who hunger in any way, that all may know your care. And prepare us now to feast on the bread of life, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you. Almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And again after supper, Jesus took the cup, and when he had again given thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And now gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, wherever we are, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. Taste and see that the Lord is good. The table is ready. The banquet is prepared. All are welcome. If you would prefer to come up for a blessing, you're welcome to do that as well.
please stand as you are able. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this healing power of this gift of life. In your mercy, strengthen us through this gift in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now, dear people of God, receive God's blessing. May the Lord bless and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Two um, other little announcements I wanted to say before we go to our final hymn. The first is, thanks to Dimitri, who is a, per a person of all trades. Um, he does the bell choir today. He did the singing choir two weeks ago. He filled in for Rachel. So congratulations on your first conducting here at Trinity. Thank you. Secondly, um, as you know, it, we're still looking for somebody to fill the CYF director position. Um, we are still looking. <laughs> so we are doing our best to fill in the blanks on all those things that need to be done. And we're working on it. Um, some, we're, we're working on it. Um, so one of the things that um, is happening next year is the ELCA Youth Convention. There hasn't been a youth convention in five years. And we're really hoping to be able to send youth. And Pastor Lane has gallantly, valiantly, generously, graciously stepped up to um, get this organized. So there is a thing in your bulletin today. Yes, thank you, Pastor Lane. There's a thing in your bulletin today. All high school students, eighth, uh, those who are in ninth grade through 12th grade, um, going into ninth grade through 12th grade, are eligible to go to the ELCA Youth Convention next year. We're having a... Um, informational meeting at seven o'clock on Wednesday. And that, so that would be for all of those students plus their parents or some sort of responsible type person. So if your kid um, would like to go or if you would like to be a chaperone um, on this trip, talk to those who went before um, last, last time. Um, there's a number, I know Mark Oudstoon went and a, a number of other people, but it was a really wonderful experience. We haven't done it in five years, so this would be a great opportunity for our kids to go on this and see how many thousands and thousands of other kids are um, really engaged with their faith in, the, um, in Christ. So that's that. And now, those were my only two announcements, right? Yes, so our final hymn is number 538, um, The Lord Now Sends Us Forth. <laughs> 